Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and perhaps good morning or good afternoon if you're watching from elsewhere in the world, given the reach of Zoom and YouTube. Welcome to this session from Edgeway United Synagogue London entitled A Celebration of the United Synagogue's Cantorial Tradition, a tribute to its Hazanim from 1870 to 2020, their lives and their music. Mm. We hold a cantorial session every year before the Yomim Noraim to get us into the appropriate frame of mind before the high holidays. This year, more than any previous one, it is much needed since not all of us will be able to attend synagogue services and even where we can, they will be much abbreviated and many of the traditional melodies that we look forward to will not be heard. Every Friday night in Kabbalat Shabbat, the cantor sings the first line of both Psalms 96 and 98, Shir Lashem Shir Chadash, Sing to the Lord a New Song. And since the establishment of the United Synagogue 150 years ago, our Chazanim have been leading congregations in liturgical prayers with melodies both old and new. It is they who have brought the service to life with their fine voices and traditional nusach and have made our places of worship special. This year, when the arts sector is under threat and struggling to survive, let us take a pride in the wonderful, majestic cantorial compositions from the past and reach out to our communities to let them know that we still value the classical works and will strive to preserve them. We may have left the EU, but I can tell you that uplifting music has no boundaries and that we shall continue to listen to and appreciate the beautiful music of Louis Lewandowski, Salomon Zaltzer, and Samuel Nunberg, respectively from Berlin, Vienna and Paris for many years to come, and the wonderful compositions by others from the mid-19th century onwards, including the Anglo-Jewish composers Monbach and Elman. Tonight, Jeff, Rabbi Jeffrey Schissler is going to highlight the best of the United Synagogue's cantorial tradition. He started his career as a U.S. cousin trained at the then Jews College in the famous New Synagogue in Egerton Road, London, followed by a long spell at Kenton as Chazan minister before being ordained as a rabbi and serving the communities of Bournemouth Hebrew Congregation and London's prestigious New West End. He is a great stickler for ac accurate traditional nusach and has a real devotion to cantorial music. Tonight we shall benefit from his expert knowledge of the UK cantorial scene in the United Synagogue since its inception, including the period that has been described as the Golden Age of Chazanut. If you want to hear some of our past sessions, please go to the Edgeway United Synagogue YouTube channel where you will find sessions that he hosted entitled My Father the Cantor and a Tribute to UK Post-War Cantors. Good evening. At the outset, I want to express my gratitude to Dr. Michael Jollies, who's done the most astonishing amount of research into the history of Chazanim and Chazanot in this country. His book is not yet published, I very much hope it will become available to the public in the not too distant future. Michael has very generously given me access to the latest draft of his work. And much of the history that I'm going to quote this evening comes from his studies. Michael hasn't been too well lately, and I dedicate this talk to him in the hope that in its merit, Hakarish Baruch Hu will grant him a refur shalema and many years of good health, enabling him to complete his marvellous work and all the other projects he's working on. At the time of the setting up of the United Synagogue in 1870, all the five founding synagogues, the Great, the Hambro, the New, the Central and the Bayswater had a Chazan. At the Great was Marcus Hast. At the Hambro was Samuel Marcus Galantz. A.L. Green was at the Central, Moses Evan Epstein was at the New, and Isaac Samuel was at Bayswater. Unfortunately, I couldn't trace any pictures of Moses Evan Epstein or Isaac Samuel. There you can see A.L. Green, Samuel Galantz, and Marcus Hast. The most celebrated of them all was undoubtedly Marcus Hast, whose legacy is a set of four volumes of his own compositions for the entire Jewish year that he called Abodat HaKodesh. Most of the pieces are arrangements for Chazan and choir. And although quite a number were included in the Blue Book, nowadays we sing very few of Hast's pieces. 
The most well known is probably the Hashem Hagdullah that you all know. Hashem Hagdullah In the preface to his books, Hast says there were three principles that guided him in writing his music. First, it must be neither concert music, nor operatic music, nor even church music, but synagogue music. Second, he must faithfully interpret the words. And third, while it doesn't have to be dull or depressing, it must never lack dignity. One shudders to think what Marcus Hass would say if he were to hear some of the utterly inappropriate melodies that are so often being brought into our shuls today, even by people who call themselves Hazanim. But that's a subject for another day. Although theoretically they could have made recordings, because the oldest known recorded human voice dates to 1860. Sadly, I'm not aware of a, a recording by any of these Khazanim. We do, however, have written reports of some of them. From these, we can see that many of them were blessed with very fine voices. In Britain, in the first half of the 19th century, the most important synagogue official was the Khazan. Not every shul had a rabbi or a minister, as they were known, but they did have a chazan. In his work, The Anglo-Jewish Pastorate, which was published in 1999, Israel Feinstein writes like this. The preacher was often at first regarded as assistant to the reader. The latter, usually known as the chazan, conducted the Sabbath and festival ser synagogue services or the major parts thereof. In some cases, the reader would occasionally preach. This would depend on his inclination and talent and on the request or permission of the lay heads of his congregation. Some later preachers of distinction began their careers as Chazan or as Baal Tefila, a conductor of synagogue services, but without the cantorial virtuosity or the aspiration thereto which a Chazan might be expected to demonstrate. The preacher would generally be called second reader, thus marking the higher category of office held by the reader. It's ironic that the grade of second reader was in time transmuted into the rank of minister, taking precedence over that of the reader. I think it's worth pointing out here that according to the Shulchan Aruch, if a community can afford to appoint only a rabbi or a chazan, they have to take a chazan. That's unless the rabbi they might want to appoint is recognized as a great authority. The reality is that a congregation can manage very well without a rabbi. There's always the possibility to make contact with a rabbi somewhere nearby when the need to answer a religious question, a she'ela, arises. But it's not always so easy to find someone who has the knowledge and ability to conduct every service of the year. Dr. Jollies points out that two centuries ago, for, for 10 years, London's great synagogue didn't employ, didn't employ a rabbi. Following the death of David Traveller Schiff in 1791, they shared the rabbi of the new synagogue, the Ambrose Synagogue. Also, the great synagogue in London didn't appoint a rabbi between 1844 and the 1940s when Rabbi Manuel Jacobowitz was appointed. A Garnet Hill Synagogue in Glasgow, which was founded in 1879, decades passed without them having a rabbi. You might be interested to know that Bethnal Green Great Synagogue London, East One, in 1915, the rabbi was paid £104 per annum, and the reader got 123 pound, five shillings per annum. Poor old caretaker only got 33 pound, five shillings. Clearly in earlier times, the role of Chazan or reader was valued much more highly than it is today. And this is reflected plainly in the fact that in the 62 synagogues of the United Synagogue, there's only one full-time Chazan. Most shuls, don't have a properly trained chazan. And in some, the services are conducted by the first one to volunteer, 
whatever his knowledge or even ability to read Hebrew, let alone his familiarity with our traditional melodies and modes. When I came into my first United Synagogue post in 1970, the new synagogue, Egerton Road, Stanford Hill, practically every sizable congregation employed the services of both a rabbi and a chazan. Being very young, just 23, I wasn't privy to the discussions of the committee, but I distinctly recall hearing at a meeting that the Chazanim were very unhappy in the way they were being treated in their communities. And a delegation went to see Chief Rabbi Jakobowitz, and apparently he listened to their grievances, then told them regretfully he couldn't help them because he was the Chief Rabbi and not the Chief Chazan. In planning this talk, I was presented with the problem of who to include. When I was a youngster just starting my career, there were a number of outstanding chazanim in the United Synagogue, and I got to know most of them very well through joining the Chazanim Association. I have in mind people like Moshe Korn, Pinchas Fagenblum, Joshua Landenberg, Simon Haas, Harry Taylor, and Charles Lowy each in his way a truly fine chazan, some of whom can still be heard on YouTube today. Now, since in the past I featured all of these people in talks that we've had here in Edgeware United, and their families have come to talk about them, I've made the decision not to speak about them again this evening. Were I to play every one of them, the evening would be far too long and we don't want to accuse the poor old Chazan yet again of dragging the service out. At the end of this evening, we shall display the YouTube addresses for these talks, and I would urge you to watch them, enjoy hearing their children talk about them, and once again, enjoy their beautiful singing. One of the earliest recordings of United Single Chazan I've been able to find is of Aaron Fuchsman. Chazan Fuchsman was born in 1892 in Zhitomir in the Ukraine. He studied music in the Petrograd Conservatoire and his first post as a Chazan was in Warsaw. He then went to become Chazan of the main synagogue in Antwerp from where he travelled and concertized extensively in Europe as well as in America. While he was in Antwerp, he was heard by two Glaswegians who approached him to become Chazan of the Langside Synagogue, Cromwell Road in Glasgow. He accepted their offer and became the very first Chazan of that shul, and he remained there for five years. In Scotland, he broadcast for the BBC, where he usually sang liturgical or Yiddish numbers. In 1927, he was, he was paid a fee of two guineas for singing a Yiddish song, a doodler, and Ki Lakach Toif. With the exposure he was receiving, it's not surprising that he was encouraged to come to London. In 1933, Chazan Fuchsman was appointed to the East London Synagogue, Stepney Green, a position he held with great distinction for 22 years. Reverend Fuchsman soon made a name for himself as an outstanding Chazan, among many fine Chazanim that London was blessed with in the years between the wars and people would flock in vast numbers to participate in the exquisite services that he conducted. These were days in which if you didn't arrive early, you probably wouldn't get a seat, and when Rosh Hashanah mornings rarely concluded before 3 p.m. After he retired, Chazan Fuchsman returned to live in Glasgow with his family, where he continued to conduct services from time to time. Indeed, when his granddaughter Sylvia got married, he sang Sheva Brachot and he received a standing ovation for it. After he died in 1969, a most fitting memorial service was held for him at the East London Synagogue. Here he is singing Ki Lechach Tov. Perhaps it's the same one that in 1927 he was paid two guineas to sing for the BBC. Oh! 
Four Kuzovitsky brothers, Moshe, David, Simcha, and Jacob, who all became celebrated Chazanim. Moshe was the only one not to hold a position in the United Kingdom, although he did come to perform at completely sold out concerts on a number of occasions, including one at the Royal Albert Hall in 1955. Just imagine a Chazanuk concert selling out the Albert Hall today. David was at Hendon United for about 12 years. Simcha was appointed to the Great Synagogue Duke's Place in 1935, remained there until he went to Johannesburg in 1947. Here is a famous photograph of Simcha singing in the ruins of the Great that had been bombed and was very badly damaged during the war. It's a very poignant picture. Jacob came to the Dalston Synagogue, Poets Road, in 1936. As you can see, it was a fine cathedral synagogue. He then went to the Western Synagogue and in 1951 went to the States. David Kuzovitsky wasn't enamored with the life of a Chazan in the United Synagogue in those days. In his book, Chosen Voices, Mark Slobin quotes from an interview he had with David. David says this, Working for the United Synagogue was like a government. Each shul sends their representative like to the House of Commons. It's like the Church of England. They all had their traditional music. They had a blue book. And they give it to you. And they tell you, Use it as much as possible. We had to be there every Shabbos, and I taught in Jews College. I used to share the weekday services with the rabbi. I did Sunday morning. No layman was allowed to officiate. I had a problem with the laning, he says. Although I could lane, I had to go to the Beth Din to pass the test. And I passed, but I refused to lane because I said, if I lane, who's going to have a musaf? That'll kill me, I said. I put my foot down with the chief warden of the synagogue and they freed me from the laning. Well, I've chosen a piece performed by Jacob, who is perhaps the least well known of the four brothers. This may be due to the fact he didn't record as much as his siblings, but it's said of him he was an absolutely superb chazan on the bimmer. And we have some live recordings of him davening. Don't ask me how they were obtained. But if you listen to them, you can hear that he really, really was quite amazing in shul. There's a very amusing anecdote that's told about Jacob's first appearance in Dalston. It's said that he sang Kaddish to the tune of John Brown's body. Well, this apparently took the formal Anglo-Jews of Dalston completely by surprise. But the reaction took Jacob by surprise too, because Jacob had never heard of the song John Brown's Body. It was a melody he'd heard in Lemberg, and he thought it would go well to Kaddish. Here's Jacob Kuzovitsky singing, Al Kane. Oh, 
Samuel Baruch Taub was born in 1914 in Zelov in Poland into a Hasidic family. His father, grandfather and great-grandfather all Khazanim, and he sang in his father's choir throughout his childhood. After yeshiva, he studied in Vienna with Khazan Emanuel Frankel. His first position was at the Montefiore Synagogue in Vienna. From there, he went to Paris to the Synagogue de la Rue Montevideo. Remained there till 1943, when the Nazis deported him to Auschwitz, from where he was liberated in 1945. And of course, there's the usual stories told of him, as of quite a number of Khazanim, who apparently they were allowed to survive because the Nazis enjoyed the, listening to their singing. In 1949, he accepted an invitation to succeed Jacob Kuzovitsky in the Dawson Synagogue. In 1951, he succeeded David at the Hendon Synagogue, where he stayed for seven years. In 1958, he accepted a position in Beth Sholem's congregation in Washington, D.C. When he retired, he made Aliyah and settled in Rehovot, where he used to govern at Berman Shul would occasionally be asked to recite Rosh Chodesh Benchen. We have very good friends living in Rehovot, and we've often stayed with them. We were there in Burma and Shul one Shabbat, and uh, I was introduced to, uh, to the cousin Tobe, and he invited me to visit him in his flat. He asked me to sing for him. I don't think he was very impressed. Anyway, he died in 2008. Here he is singing Naritzko. <laughs>
Jasmine Fryan Fischel Rosenberg was born on the 25th of June, 1917, Betland, Transylvania. As a youngster, he studied at the Yeshiva of Vizhnitsa Hasidim. He studied Chazonas with the famous cousin Pinchas Pin Specter. In the early 1930s, Cousin Rosenberg accepted a position at the Great Synagogue of Bucharest, Romania. He and his wife Esther survived the war, and in 1947, he became Chazan at the Shomri Hadass Synagogue, Finchley Road in London. He left there in 1949 to go to the Great Synagogue in Allenby Street in Tel Aviv. He was also appointed Chief Chazan to the Israeli Defence Forces. In 1952, he came back to London to the new synagogue in Stamford Hill, Egerton Road. But unfortunately, he only stayed there for four years, going to the States in 1956. When I was appointed Chazan there in 1970, they were still talking about Fischl Rosenberg. In 1967, he accepted a position at the Beth Shalom Congregation in Toronto, where he stayed until his death in 1978. I met cousin Rosenberg once. He came back to London in about 1965 to sing at a concert, which if my memory serves me well, was at Friend's House in the Euston Road. It's a very big venue and it was packed. The concert was on Sunday and on the Shabbat before he conducted services at Hampstead, Hampstead Garden Suburb Shul. Since I was only about 17 years old, obviously I was still living at home with my parents in North Finchley. So I decided to walk to the suburb to listen to him. I can still recall he was absolutely stupendous. And I'm talking about a service that I heard about 55 ye years ago. I can still, still feel the tingling down my spine that I got when he sang Misha Belach before the prayer for the Queen. I was not used to be emotionally engaged in Shul. Well, the next day, Cousin Rosenberg sang at the concert, which was amazing. And on Monday, he came to Juice College to visit Reverend Leo Brill and the Chazanut class in which I was studying. Reverend Brill had accompanied him at the concert. There were about 15 boys in the class in those days, all studying to become Chazanim. As was his custom, when a visiting cousin came, Reverend Brill prevailed upon our guest to sing something, as he would say, for my boys. Cantor Rosenberg pleaded that he was tired, and I'm sure he was, but Reverend Brill would have nothing of it. In my mind's eye, I can still see how cousin Rosenberg picked up a sitter from the piano and just opened it. He'd opened up the weekday Amida, and he said to the Reverend Brill, I'll sing a talk on name. What followed was a tour de force. Reverend Brill was the most extraordinary accompanist. He had an uncanny knack of knowing what you were going to sing, even before you reached the phrase. If truth were to be told, he was not technically the finest of pianists, but he was an accompanist absolutely without equal. I suspect that Cousin Rosenberg improvised and Reverend Brill just followed him and it sounded as if they had rehearsed for hours. It was just incredible. Oh, if he'd only had a tape recorder in those days. Fischl Rosenberg was a truly great Chazan and I'm sure there are some people who can still recall hearing him in Egerton Road. Here he is singing Anim Amin. <laughs> Thank you. 
really sorry that the recording there isn't better. Uh, Tony has worked hard at it and certainly made it very much better than it was originally. But um, it, there are not many recordings of um, Akhaz and Rosenberg. Um, some that I have are rather long, so we decided to stick with this one. I hope you've enjoyed it because, as I'm sure you will agree, he really was quite outstanding. Our next cousin is the Reverend Mark Eliezer Hertzberg. He was born in London in 1910. He studied at the Yeshiva Chaim in Thrall Street in London, and he also studied with the famous composer Samuel Allman. At the age of 10, he was asked to act as Kazan at the opening service of the popular Hebrew congregation, and also at the opening of the Shadwell Talmud Torah. As a boy Kazan, he officiated at various synagogues in the East End. At the age of 16, he conducted the choir at Philpott Street Great Synagogue. And when he was 18, he conducted a choir at the Pavilion Theatre Whitechapel Road on the same occasion at which Gershon Sirota sang. For four years, he served as Kazan at the old Montague Street Synagogue, the Chevra Shas. And in 1934, he succeeded to cousin Aaron Fuchsman, the Langside Hebrew Congregation in Glasgow. He stayed there just for a year. In 1935, he came down to London, where he succeeded the Reverend G. Prince as reader at St. John's Wood Synagogue, where he stayed for 40 years until his retirement in 1975. Reverend Hertzberg was Honorary Secretary of the Association of Ministers Kazanim of Great Britain, he was Vice President of the North Northwest Jewish Day Schools. He is well remembered for his work for the Friends of Boys Town, Jerusalem, for which, during his chairmanship, he presided over the raising of over £2 million. In 1980, a Hertzberg Lectorship in Musical Appreciation was created. Mark Hertzberg made very few recordings, and that's a particular shame, because as you will hear, he really was a fine chazan. Here he is in a rather rare recording which his family kindly gave me, singing Kavodo Mole Olon.
Our next Khazan is Avieza Pe'er, and he's the only Khazan on this list this evening who fortunately is still with us. Khazan Pe'er came from Israel and served as Khazan at the New Synagogue London during the 1960s, during which time he sang at special services in other London synagogues, for example at the Western Synagogue, Hampstead Garden Suburb Synagogue and in Finchley. There was a great tradition of cobble singing at the new synagogue. And unfortunately for the shul, while he was there, and I say this uh, with somewhat with tongue in cheek, uh, he became very religious. But unfortunately that meant he didn't want to sing any longer with the choir. And there were many times he would stand on the bimmer and he would just stand while the choir sang and members of the, con of the choir sang the cousin solos. But anyway, he went to the Adas in North London, which was certainly to my advantage because I was his successor. I'll never forget a concert in Hendon with Chazan Malavani and Chazan Korn and Chazan Pe'er. It was in 1966. He was just 27. And I can remember, I think I must have been in the gallery. I can remember sitting there and we listened to Chazan Korn, absolutely beautiful, of course. We listened to Chazan Malavani, very fine Chazan. And then we were all waiting with uh, quite considerable interest because most of us hadn't heard Chazan Pe'er. And this very sh rather short, rather slim young man came on. The other two had been wearing dinner suits, I remember, with their bow ties. And this man came on with a very nice smart suit, but just stood there very quietly, took out a sitter, and he opened his mouth, and I can only say he really blew us away. We weren't expecting him to be as good as he was. So in many respects, it's a very great tragedy that the Almighty gave him such a wonderful, wonderful talent that he didn't eventually develop. But that was his decision. Anyway, I wanted you to hear him because most of you won't have done here he is singing Shoma Batis Machtsion.
We come to our final Chazan this evening, and he is Reverend Aaron Siegel. Chazan Siegel was born in Yerushalayim, and he led synagogue services from a very early age. He studied with the great composer and teacher, Chazan Shlomo Zalman Rivlin. Incidentally, Rivlin, who was Chazan at one shul in Israel, she wrote yourself for nearly 60 years, trained many Chazanim, went on to make names for themselves around the world. Chazan Siegel fought in Israel's wars of independence and came to Britain with his wife Nechama in the 1950s. He started off as Chazan at Stoke Newington Synagogue in Shackwell Lane, where Jacob Kuzlitsky had once served. Then he came to Cockfosters and Southgate Synagogue, where he served for about 25 years until 1990. He died in 2001. Here he is singing Yirotso. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
you can see we really are hot off the press you might have noticed that that photograph of Southgate Cockross the Shul was taken very recently because unfortunately it has all the tapes up to keep people social distanced anyway we now come to the end of our program and I'm going to close with a piece sung by the London Jewish Male Voice Choir under the direction of Manny Fisher both Chassam Fagenblum and Chassam Korn were members of this choir at various times and both absolutely outstanding soloists. It's not unlikely that at least one of them was singing in this recording. The fortunes of the London Jewish Male Voice Choir have varied over the years. There's no doubt that sometimes in their existence they've ranked amongst the greatest Jewish choirs in this country. Some of you may well recall the superb concert they gave at the Royal Festival Hall in 1968. The piece I've selected to conclude our evening is their performance of Lewandowski's La Shem Oritz. It's a mightily stirring piece that's never sung as it was written because of the canon in the middle where God's name is repeated a number of times. Here it's sung as a concert piece so we can hear it in all its glory. I hope you've enjoyed this evening. United Synagogue, as you can see, and as you know, has had some outstanding chazanim over the years. And although those wonderful days have all but vanished, I hope this has revived some lovely, lovely memories and brought to your attention chazanim of whom you may not have heard before. Before I finish, I want to say a huge thanks to Tony Honigberg and Phil Singer for their technical input. Tony arranged all the slideshows and the audio. Without him, this presentation would have been a pretty poor show. And Phil has been very helpful, particularly with the displaying of all the pictures that you've seen. I wish you all Shana Tova, and I leave you with the London Jewish Male Voice Choir singing La Shema Aretz by Louis Lewandowski.
Well, I'd like to thank Rabbi Jeffrey Schistler for tonight's presentation, which I'm sure will become a talk of reference in the future and hope that it will, will encourage you to listen to other cantorial works now that it's so easy to access them online. I would also like to thank Tony Hollingberg for all his work on the sound recording, some of which were very old, and Phil Singer for acting as facilitator. We have three upcoming sessions in the new biennial program from Rosh Hashanah to Pesach 2021, which you can find on the Edgeware US website, www.edgewareu.com, which those with an interest in Hazanat will wish to know about. On the 1st of December, we have a session by Dr. Sharman Kaddish on 150 years of United Synagogue architecture, which will discuss the Grand Victorian Cathedral Synagogues in which the best of cantoral music was heard. Edgeware US celebrates its 90th anniversary next February, and on February the 2nd, Rabbi Jeffrey Schuster will return to talk about and play cantorial music by the five Chazanim who served this community in the 20th century, including Joseph Malavani and Asher Hainowitz, both of whom are patrons of the European Cantors Association. Finally, in the week before Pesach, we have a session on March the 23rd, in which we shall play selections of the Seder music performed by some of the world's greatest cantors, entitled A Seder Fit for a King. This session will now be available on YouTube, and if you enjoyed this session, please hit the like and share buttons. I wish you all a safe year ahead. Shana Tova to everybody.